that's perfect yeah. ruben uh, thank you thank you very much for that introduction hello everyone very good morning uh, today i'm very happy again uh, to e meet you all ba welcome back to aoscx 10.8 series of uh, toi as ruben mentioned i'm going to take you uh, a journey next 15 minutes of introducing you 6300 modular switches dc power supply before uh, you see the dc power supply and the components we support around the dc power supply it is good to understand why we are supporting dc power supply on 6300m platform and who needs them mostly as you guys know telco network the older telco network runs on a complete dc right so when they want any kind of a dc switch a uh, data switch which needs to be racked up on those rack we don't have anything supported till 10.7 because all the psus we support on 6300m models that is six models we have or all of that is ac power supply so now with 10.8 we have a chance of introducing them to dc power supply that means we have those customers who are telco networks we can go back and answer them we have a box for you to mount on their racks the second thing is the energy and the transportation few customers they requested this dc power supply which is required for them the another one thing is some of the japanese customer and also the apac customers they wanted the ac and a dc power supply mixed on a single 6300 modular chassis right modular uh, stand alone switch and also on the vsf stack so that is also supported as part of 10.8 and few of the federal customers they also wanted a dc source which is very near to them they wanted to have the dc power supply for a redundancy and also a ac on another psu so these are the four key main reasons uh, we are introducing the dc power supply to the field uh, from 10.8 release i know you might be already thinking about the certification part of this dc power supply uh in ebs certification is required it is on the progress currently with 10.8 we don't claim that support because we need a production psu to get the certification done let's keep this in mind and let's move on to the let's get introduced to ourselves to the 10.8 what we are introducing a new power supply on the 6300m platform so as you see on this screen these are the four new components are getting added to the aruba family so one is the dc power supply for a poe switches as you know these power supply you can't go and insert to a non poe switches because of the mechanical keying as you see you can identify this difference at the back of the psc you can see here the both are different i think you can able to make out that one you can't take a poe power supply and insert to any of the non poe switches that's where you have that one and this is the power supply for your poe and this is the dc power supply which is getting introduced you can see here this is for your ground and this for your positive and this for your negative i'm going to cover all of that in detail uh, on the installation process uh, this is on the dc power supply which we are getting introduced for the poe and same thing for the non poe so these cables are also very very important because these are the recommended cables that means you need to buy this cable when you are buying this dc power supply is it mandatory it is not mandatory to buy this uh, aruba cables you can also buy from the market but you have to make sure the gauge is proper that means for the poe power supply you need to have the more than 40 amperes of uh, current passing cable that means you need to take a look at that the current passing capability on that cable you guys know the ohms law i don't have to go and repeat those all basics so make sure that when you are buying these all have to uh, adhere to the same specification which i'm going to show you guys in the next slide for a non poe power supply you can insert 8 awg gauge cable or 12 awg cable i would definitely recommend as for the recommendation it is 12 awg for the non poe and 8 awg for the poe uh, power supply let's go and little bit look into the specification as i was mentioning you can see the input should be around 32 amperes carrying on a poe power supply okay poe power supply you can know you, you can easily identify them 
this kind of a yellow sticker will be there on all the poe power supply non poe power supplies will have a white sticker on them when you keep it in your hand you can clearly identify them and tell them which is whether it is a poe power supply from aruba or not that's a some uh, kind of a quick identification and also this mechanical keying can be easily identified okay this can go into a poe switches or not so you this is can achieve a redundancy with remember this is another question we keep getting on the most of the time even during the ac power supply when we supported this supports redundancy with 87 that means like to like it supports 1050 watt that is the input wattage it supports the same thing there on the ac power supply uh, in case of what we support which we which i have covered in the next slide which i'm going to show you same thing we have to use that means on a 6300 platform you can install two dc power supply together that is supported or you can insert one dc power supply which is of dc and the same wattage of ac power supply that is only supported okay to see the status of the power supply you guys we are not introducing any new command it is the same command show environment power supply make sure when the engineer is on the site or when you are debugging this ps status is okay this is what the most important thing and in case of ac what you see here it is the ac in case of dc the input is dc it clearly shows and the, as i was telling you guys maximum port wattage supported is 1050 this is what i was telling ac and dc you can mix them only thing is they have to be same okay on a vsf stack you can have ac and dc mix only with the supported combination which you will see it in the next slide non poe power supply you can see here the input should be around 8.2 amps this is what it, we are claiming support and cable when you are buying from a third party make sure that uh, this input amp is uh, clearly written on that cable and you buy those kind of cable right again uh, this is on the same status here also we support the redundancy and the recommended cable which i was showing you on the 12 awg is what recommended here to just to see on a consolidated way till now we support as you know five power supply on aruba 6300 m platforms right as you see here these are the five power supplies we support now we are introducing these two power supplies and as you see here jl 758a is the poe power supply and this you can go with another poe power supply here right which is jl 87a where in case of jl 757a can go with non poe power su power supply that's what it is uh, uh, meant here let's move on and understand about this uh, cables again these kind of questions i framed because of your yammer queries in the past is it mandatory to use a aruba dc power cables no only thing is you should make sure the gauges are proper when you are buying from the market can i either have the 8 awg and 12 awg cables connected or used on the dc power supply non poe you can use both there is no problem but recommended is to use the 12 awg for the poe it's only only supported as 88 awg because of the gauge the bigger fatter cable is what you have to use for the poe power supply and the conditions are written here when you are buying the power why you have to buy the 8 awg and what is the difference how you can identify them that is written here what is the difference between the 8 awg and the 12 awg cable regarding the matrix supported matrix many times we see this question on the yammer even for the ac power supply hence this is what only supported please take a look at this one for a minute so dc power supply for a non poe is introduced in the 10.8 you can connect on one modular power supply and also on another that means both the power supply are like to like works perfectly fine and it is supported combination the next one is the poe you have to connect both the dc yes this is what the telco industries uh, requirement these two you can see here these two combinations are supported for the telco customers but if you are looking for any of the where people wanted one power supply dc source which is the nearest power supply for them whenever there is a problem in the ac still the communication continues to happen in their data center or in their campus for those customers they need a one side dc power supply and another side they need a ac power supply for those customers we do support that one combination you can see here this is what their combination is so i have already explained this one is it possible to mix a poe and a non poe dc and ac power supplies on a 6300 m platform 
not possible okay because of mechanical keying on the power supplies itself so there is another thing which always comes up yes customers understand this they have to connect a redundant like to like but still they bought some 38 10 power supplies they have it and 29 30 m power supplies they have it they want to use it yeah we want though we don't recommend that one what to do customers like to do that and that's what i saw with many customers they usually wants to keep a non poe power supplies on the device though we say it is not a good practice because it won't achieve a redundancy when they connect all the poe devices the pd devices on the 6300 platform it won't achieve a right redundancy because the psu capacity itself differs right though we get these kind of queries hence there is a detailed table in the next slide for the poe ac dc mixing take a look at that slide and i'll give you for a, maybe a 30 seconds to observe that slide because there is a lot of content in that so this is a slide which i was talking about though we say it is a straight combination to the customer because customer have their legacy power supplies which we sold to them they want to keep the mixed poe power supplies in those cases please make sure this table is used and understood by you all right and explain them that there is a high chances when you connect a two power supply which are not of the right capacity you won't achieve a right redundancy that needs to be told to them again and again so that they move to a right redundancy that means like to like power supplies when they connect a 1600 watt that is the highest power as you know on the 6300 m platform which is a 60 watt driving uh, power supply as you see here this power supply if you just mix with let's consider i am going to mix this with a low line one is high line and another one is low line what happens is this whenever there is a failure instead of getting the poe power supply as you see here it is 1600 1300 watt poe is coming out that means if there is a two psus without redundancy you are going to get 2880 watt of power right if you achieve a redundancy what happens is you are going to get 1300 that means both have to be like to like in case if you don't have that one the fall back will be 600 watt let's consider you mix this with high line and a low line or you mix this jl6770 uh a with jl087a what is going to happen it's going to fall back to the lowest number that means your pds which are connected will automatically shut down with the low priority because the default is a low priority in case if you are not set what will happen automatically from the higher ports it will not shut down all the pds these kind of things you have to explain to the customer so that they don't don't run we had few issues customer issues on same problem right mixing the psus so these notes have to be clearly explained to them that's what i'm been explaining to you and before the guy leaves the site make sure he understand the led status is it blinking properly and you check the show environment power supply status both should match and then only you should ask the site engineer to come out from the site okay loose connection see this is a psu this is not a ospf for a security feature if there is a yeah there is a control plane missing you can you can again go and debug find out the problem but here the power supply cable somebody has connected loose connection to the plus uh, it's going to definitely you you're going to have a again and again problem you have to send the engineer to site back on all of that so make sure these all notes have been read and told to the customer which i'm going to cover step wise how to install them and how to make sure the safety precautions are taken all of that in the next slide this is also another information which is keep uh, getting be asked with the hardware whenever we introduce anything the competition com uh, competition comparison right so as you see on the biggest competition cisco wise there is a only one power supply which is they have which is this one don't think about this one this is on a cisco catalyst 9500 right it is nothing to do with our competition of access switches so this is you have to just forget this but just we are keeping it so that you are aware what what is happening as you see here this is the only competition they have they don't have anything like a non pa poe and a poe dc power supply but we do have and other competitions like extreme miraki or anything like that if you look at even on google you will not find any dc psu supported today 
and that is something which you have to keep we have to keep watching juniper has this one as you see here it is only capacity is 550 watt dc psu so it is not having anything of 700 near to 700 watt poe we are uh, providing as per uh, today right let's move on this is again uh, as i told you installation of the dc power cable is very very important because ac power cable what are you going to do there is only one notch of the cable you are going to insert either high line or a low line you will understand and you will go and plug it in right but in case of a dc power supply there is some little bit of uh, electric electrical work which is required and it needs to happen very clearly as you see here on the picture right there is something like green red and black this is what the uh, AWG standard is for, and we are providing those kind of cable, American wire gauge cable. Thanks to Rob, uh, I was just putting this AWG and he asked that question, hey, you know, just expand that AWG, then I have to look for Google and find out this. I was thinking it's a unit, but I was not trying to uh, go through that one. So as you see here, uh, green, red, and black, these are the cables you find and how you are going to install them is very, very clear. Most of the time, these colors will match in most of the countries. But uh, I heard from some of the customers that it is not true, right? Uh, yesterday I was talking to one of the Singapore customers. So he told very clearly that uh, don't assume like that. There are customers, they don't even buy anything from the Aruba or from the American uh, companies, especially on the cable and the transceivers. They buy from the local vendors and they install them. In those kind of th things, th these all might change. During that time, what you have to ask some of the question is, which is the wire which it is which is meant for the hot right here you can see hot means if we all understand it's a red right so it's a little pinkish here but consider it as a red okay so this is what you have to connect on the plus on the black you have to connect the minus this green cable is a must you have to must and should connect this ground so this is what it is there and you can see some of the notes here these notes are very important when you are especially there on the site trying to install this one Let's see very, very another one, one important thing. Uh, if you have done any kind of electrical work, you'll understand why this is so important when I say this. You have to maintain three inches gap between this, these cables, right? Otherwise, you know what's, what's going to be the cause of the, uh, having the green cable near to the red. Uh, how, what, is, what is going to happen, right? And also remember, these cables are so heavy you need to tie them before start screwing it on the power supply. The first step, as soon as you hold the DC uh, power cable, what you have to do, you need to find the rack space and you need to tie them properly. Those cables have to be tied so that no weight pulls because of the gravity, the power supply should not come out, right? You should make sure that when I have a picture to show you how the power supply chances of heavy chances to come out. So this is like, you should not, this I don't want to read everything, when somebody is on the site, just paste this one to him, let him read and then start installing. What are the steps he has to start with, right? This is the first step he has to do. He has to install the DC power supply as soon as he reaches the site and uh, connect the DC power supply onto the Aruba 6300M platform. Once he does that one, if he has a DC cable, just he has to connect this one to the, mount this one properly onto the rack. Remember, there is a trans, you can, I don't know whether you're able to see, there is a transparent shielding, safety shielding is here, uh, which I'm gonna show you in the next slide. Then he has to remove this uh, safety sh uh, shield from that one, that's a protective cover. It's just a small plastic cover. He has to remove that one, very, very important cover. If you ask me between a green and a uh, combination of a plus and minus, you know. So, and then step four, install this properly and then put the protective cover back. Steve, I know let's, yesterday when I was presenting to uh, our team, this was one thing uh, he was very much clearly because he has done the field enablement. He knows installing the protective care cover, how important it is. So it's very, very important to install this protective cover before you leave the site. This is a good example. You can see this is so neat. Whatever it has been told as a steps, same way it has been followed and you can see how it is clean and the power supply coming out, chances are very, very less. If you ask me, it is almost negligible, right? But in this case, you can see it's it's connected. Rack looks so, I don't know what to say, but there are very high chances this power supply, DC power supply will come out because of these cables are so heavy. Look at this fat cable, which is going to this power supply, right? This is the eight AWG cable, which is going there. And if it is definitely on the top of the rack here, for sure this power supply will come out, right? 
So those all things are the one things which you have to note uh, when we are installing this cable. Coming back on the troubleshooting, this is very important from the point of view of our teammates from ERT and TAC. AC and DC power supplies does not make any difference when you are debugging a problem. The first command you have to make sure you execute is show events minus R, you know very well, it's a reverse. And D is for the daemon which you are looking for. So show events minus R minus D power D, which will provide you the all the event log which is related to the power supply as you connect it, right? And it provides you all the event. These event IDs are going to matter a lot. Keep this one because these the event IDs are constant, right? As you know, AOS CX platform, these event IDs are constant for the power D. This event ID will not be coming to the anything others. So it's a fixed ones. In case if you're trying to debug, just look at the event log guide on the Google Aruba AOS CX 6300 event log guide. As soon as you type that one, you will get a one guide which will display all the event IDs. So as soon as you know, you will, when you are debugging that problem, you can just even query for that ID also. Okay, especially from my friends from ERT and TAC, I know you spend a lot of time. This is gonna be, I was thinking it's a very handy input for you. And uh, another power which I already covered is show environment power supply for AC or DC, execute that one and make sure this status is okay and it is shown the proper voltages, right? So moving on to a debugging, uh, there is a debug command for this one. So you just have to provide the debug power management all severity info. You guys know default severity info is not enabled. You have, if you just provide debug power management all, severity info will not be enabled. So you need to understand that one, provide the severity info and then issue a show, once you uh, do a debug buffer destination, once you execute that command and, and then execute the show uh, debug buffer module power management, you will be able to see all the details. Especially when you have a problem, these details helps a lot for the development team to debug further, right? Just trying to save everybody's time with this troubleshooting technique. If you have a power supply uh, issue, just get into this slide, copy these all commands, execute them, and then go back, get back to the engineering teams. There is a DAC command. Understanding this DAC commands is very, very easy, as you guys know, but not all the commands. But this command is very, very easy. It provides all the details, especially regarding that power supply, AC or DC, right? That's what you see here. Again, uh, these are the, some of the commands, very, very important, not for you. It is for important for the development team. These registers, they are gonna decode and understand what's happening. Please provide these to output uh, when you are coming back to the development team. The next thing is before you post any questions on the Yammer, because our team is also working on many other projects. So this is something in effort, like all the FAQs have been kept here. Just take a look at it in case if it is not uh, covered, you can then go to the Yammer and ask some questions. So most of the questions are here. Why I'm not able to insert a PS into the slot of 6300M platform? I got this question during uh, AC power supply support. Hence, I put this one here. Uh, why is my PS is not turning on uh, or booting properly? What is that I have to do next step? So this is what you have to do next step. What LED to check? What PS to check? Those are informations are given. Follow this check parameters so that it will uh, definitely help you. So this is again, I covered in the uh, few slides. This which, which first slide only I told you which customers and who needs the DCPS. This is what uh, you have to look for. These are the reasons we are supporting this uh, power supply. This is certification. I know most of you, when you go for selling this one, the certification is a mandatory and we are working currently, okay? And uh, Ed Corata is the PLM for this one. If you want an exact timeline, you have to reach out to our PLM. Again, this question already covered, things are there with you guys. So moving on, just uh, a small quick demo in five minutes, I'll cover that part to you. Let me restart this. Hope you are able to see my screen, I'll continue. Show environment power supply is the command. This switch is a VSF stack switch. I just wanted to show you guys where I all the slides contain the standalone information. Here you can see it's a 10 member stack, which has all the DC and a AC power supply mixed. Where in case of the first SKU, which we are, which you can see here, which is having a product ID of JL, which we saw just now, this DC is looking okay status and both the power supplies, that means slot one, as well as the slot two power supply is having the DC power supply. Okay, and the next one, which is the next member is having the AC power supply, where you can go back and see the fourth power supply, 
there is a fault output fault that means this cable has not screwed properly like this you get some output but you can't do much about it that's why i'm telling you have to tell if you ask the development team to debug further here there is no way you can debug anything because it's a screwing problem it is not a ospf problem or it's not a some of the protocol problem right this is not a state of the protocol this is a problem with the cable so you need to talk to the uh, site engineer so that's where this 4/1 and 4/2 again this is you can see it is a 1050 watt and this is a 250 watt poe non poe power supply and a poe power supply as you guys know as i was telling you guys the next command which you had for the vsf stack if you want to see each of the member you you guys know how to execute that one this is not a new command show environment power supply again right and the vsf this is there as all the for all the commands whatever we support we provide this vsf member then you can provide the member details and execute whatever you want to see like you want to see the particular member the next one which i was telling you guys is the event log this is something show events okay and always use this minus r which will help you to quickly identify what's the problem and then the d if you guys know the demon it's fine otherwise you as i was telling you look for the event id from the event log document which is published from that you can get a event log id you can use that event log id and execute here i know the power demon uh, demon name so what which i'm going to provide here it will take as we are executing minus r it's going to take 1 minute don't think like that it's sluggish or slow this is expected behavior okay because i'm giving a minus r then on the dat commands you guys know before you enable the dat command you need to execute this command and then you can execute all the dat commands so this is the dat command which i was uh, showing you before going to the engineering team members this is input is very important to them this will display only for that member let's consider you want to go for a member 2 or a member 3 what you want to do this is something which you have learned in the vsf stack so just get into in order to get into member 2 just enter the member 2 and enter the password if you know the password properly right otherwise you can't get in this is the admin password you need to know for your stack enter that one and you can get into the stack and execute the same dac command which i was telling you few minutes back right dac power supply now you can see the power supply of this one all dac commands you can't get it from the conductor you have to get it from the respective members right so dac show power supply right so here you can get the second members uh, power supply details it will take a minute so this is what you are going to do like member 2 and member 3 i am in a vpn there is something i am getting a disconnect on this uh, device so what you are going to do you understood hope you are very clear on this one you are going to execute the dac command on the first power uh, first conductor if you want to get into any kind of a members you are get into the member 2 or if you want to get into member 10 you are going to execute member 10 and the password then you are going to execute this command before reaching out to further debugging from the engineering side hope this is clear to you and thanks for listening to me this is we are introducing dc power supply from 10.8 release okay thank you